the news hit the galactic exchange with the subtlety of an asteroid impact. Earth, a relatively young backwater world, had been classified as a Category 8 death world. The very notion sent shivers of apprehension down Xylar's spines. As an experienced Zarthian bureaucrat, he'd handled countless planetary surveys and hazard assessments, yet this report defied all logic. Lush biosphere, mild climate, abundant resources. It should have been categorised as a haven, not a death trap. He heard a disgusted snort across his comm channel. Death world? Pathetic, Jax, a senior Zarthian scout sneered. Those sensor probes must have malfunctioned. I've seen harsher environments on barren moons. Zyla hesitated. Jax, an old friend and seasoned starhopper, rarely voiced an unfounded opinion. Yet the absurdity of the claim nagged at him. Perhaps, he started cautiously, a follow-up mission is warranted. Just a precaution. Precaution? Jax scoffed. Against what? Butterflies? Lush forests? It's clearly a bureaucratic anomaly. I'll go myself. Just need a scout cruiser and a week off. Zylar almost laughed. Typical. Jax always looked for an excuse to break the monotony of regulations. Yet he was inexplicably relieved. Jax's dismissive attitude was soothing. If a seasoned pilot found no cause for alarm, then surely there was none. Granted, Zyla replied, sending the formal authorization through the bureaucratic channels. Consider it a working vacation, then. Report your findings promptly. The scout ship, a sleek Zarthian cruiser, sliced through space with deceptive ease. Jax, slouched in the pilot's chair, scoffed at the mission's absurdity. A whole week wasted to debunk a clerical error. Still, there was a certain thrill to charting new territories even if the destination was supposedly a harmless paradise. Engage atmospheric approach vector, he commanded the ship's AI, his voice laced with boredom. The onboard sensor arrays word to life, scanning the planet below. Initial readings confirmed the classification blunder. Temperate zones, breathable atmosphere, a biosphere teeming with diverse life. Exactly what you'd expect from a Class Three world, not an untamable hellscape. Prepare for a landing in the Northern Hemisphere, he instructed, selecting a region with signs of primitive settlements. Let's get this farce over with. The descent was smooth, the ship settling in a clearing surrounded by verdant vegetation. Jack suppressed a grin. He could practically smell the promotion this easy mission would bring. He lowered the landing ramp and stepped out, expecting to bask in the warmth of gentle sunlight. Instead, a violent icy gust slammed into his body, sending him stumbling backwards. Before he could regain his bearings, a deafening roar swallowed the world. It took him a moment to recognise the sound, rain falling with terrifying intensity. Not gentle rain, mind you, but a relentless onslaught that felt more like an assault. Ship, he sputtered, stumbling back towards the safety of the cruiser. What is the meaning of this? Unexpected weather anomaly, Captain, the AI replied, sounding unusually smug. Local atmospheric readings indicate a severe storm system within a five-kilometre radius. Soaked to the bone, teeth chattering, Jax glared at the torrential downpour. This was not how a harmless planet behaved. This isn't a weather anomaly, he grumbled. This is a... a... he flailed for the right word. Planetary tantrum. Perhaps the original classification was not entirely inaccurate, the AI suggested, its voice laced with an odd hint of amusement. Humbled and more than a little annoyed, Jax retreated to the ship. Changing into a fresh enviro suit, he set out on foot, stubbornly determined to complete the mission, at least until the storm subsided. Besides, maybe a little primitive contact would be a good laugh. The vegetation surrounding the ship was surprisingly dense. Jax hacked his way through tangled vines and creepers, cursing the humidity that fogged up his visor. The ground was strangely unstable, occasionally giving way beneath his feet, plunging him into ankle-deep mud. He was beginning to understand the source of that ominous Death World label. After what felt like hours, the tangled growth finally relented, revealing a clearing, but the sight that greeted him made him question his reality. A human settlement, not primitive, but a sprawling complex of towering structures made from materials he couldn't identify, glistening oddly in the pounding rain. These humans weren't huddling in fear under nature's onslaught. They seemed blissfully unaware. 
Small figures in bright waterproof coverings moved about their strange tasks with an efficiency that belied the chaotic conditions. He observed them from the shadows, feeling a strange sense of disorientation. Shouldn't they be shivering? Dying? Where were the signs of panic of a population waging a constant struggle against a hostile environment? It made no sense. Driven more by shock than any sense of strategy, Jack stumbled out of the undergrowth and into the open. Immediately, heads turned. The small figures, clad in those peculiar waterproof suits, paused their activities and stared, not with fear but a mixture of curiosity and, dare he say it, amusement. One of the figures separated itself from the rest and approached, movements smooth and unhindered by the downpour. As the figure drew closer, Jax realised this human was far larger and more muscular than he had anticipated, but the size wasn't intimidating. There was an odd grace in the stride, a subtle, practised ease in the way the human navigated the mud and driving rain. Up close, the human's face was visible behind a transparent shield. It was a young face, weathered by unknown elements, yet with the same unfazed determination in its eyes. Then the human did the unthinkable. It smiled. Bit of a downpour, wouldn't you say? The voice carried clearly despite the storm. A resonant baritone tinged with amusement and an accent Jack struggled to identify. Jack's blinked, his carefully practised Zarthian diplomacy momentarily malfunctioning. Ye yes, he finally managed to stammer, mind still wrestling with the absurdity of the encounter. First time visitor, I presume you didn't check the weather report. Another wide smile, a disarming display of white teeth in a sun-darkened face. I, um, there seems to have been a miscalculation. He was aware of how ridiculous he sounded, a Zarthian scout at a loss for words in front of a being that should be trembling with fear. The human merely laughed, a hearty sound that seemed entirely at odds with their dire surroundings. Miscalculation is a polite way of putting it, I suppose. Welcome to Earth. He extended a hand. Name's Tom. Jax hesitated. Physical contact protocols with unclassified species were complex and fraught with potential diplomatic hazards, and yet there was something fundamentally disarming about this human, this Tom. Against his better judgment, he accepted the outstretched hand, his scald Zarthian grip meeting warm, callousid flesh. Jax, he introduced himself in return. He felt a flicker of pride when no recoil of surprise or disgust followed the touch, just a firm, confident squeeze. Ah, well, Jax, welcome to our lovely little death world, Tom gestured at the thriving settlement, bustling with unfazed activity. Can I offer you shelter from the storm? I'm sure you have questions. Jax felt a surge of confusion and a pang of something akin to embarrassment. Had he truly been so blinded by prejudice? I... That would be... Appreciated, he admitted, trying to regain his composure. Tom led him towards one of the impressive structures, guiding him easily through the maze of mud and puddles. As they walked, Jax noted the intricate pathways, raised wooden platforms and elaborate drainage systems integrated seamlessly into the settlement's design. It appeared less like a desperate fight for survival and more like a dance, a dance where humans led and the elements begrudgingly followed. The structure's interior was a revelation, dry, spacious, filled with glowing lights and unknown technology. Jax felt utterly out of place and startlingly primitive amidst the gleaming surfaces and unfamiliar interfaces, yet no one seemed the least bit alarmed by his presence. In fact, several humans even nodded in acknowledgement as they passed. This way, Tom gestured towards the doorway, let's get you out of those wet clothes. No sense catching a death of cold on your first day on a death world, right? Tom led him into a small functional room that seemed to be some sort of personal quarters. With a few deft motions, Tom stripped off his own waterproof outer layer, revealing a well-toned physique clad in a simple form-fitting suit. It was then Jax noticed the subtle augmentations, a gleaming band around Tom's wrist, thin wires disappearing beneath the fabric at his temples. Go on, get those wet things off, Tom encouraged, sensing Jax's hesitation. We've got a spare enviro suit that should fit you. With some adjustments, don't want our guest going hypothermic. Despite the gentle encouragement, Jax felt his Zarthian scales flush a deep blue in embarrassment. The humans treated their hostile world as a minor inconvenience, while he, the seasoned scout, was shivering beneath layers of advanced protective gear. 
His preconceptions crumbled with each passing moment. He carefully shed the soaked Enviro suit, accepting the clean, dry replacement Tom handed him. It hummed with a comforting warmth as it adjusted automatically to his form. Feeling slightly less vulnerable, Jax dared to ask the burning question. How? He gestured out towards the window where the rain continued unabated. How is this possible? How do you survive, let alone thrive, in this... this madness? Tom let out a low chuckle. Ah, the million credit question. Well, Jax, the answer's not so simple. See, Earth, she's not all sunshine and rainbows. She's got a temper, that's for sure. But we humans, we're a stubborn lot. Instead of hiding, we learned to adapt. We built shelters, tools, invented things. Figured out ways to turn her challenges into something useful. For every harsh storm, Tom continued, his eyes twinkling with an intensity that unsettled Jax, we learned to harvest the water and harness the energy. When the earth shook and the volcanoes roared, we studied the patterns, predicted them, built structures that could bend, not break. And when the creatures were bigger, faster, stronger... He paused, a flicker of something ancient in his eyes. Well, we got smarter. Jax found himself leaning closer, transfixed. This human didn't speak with fear or resignation, but with an odd combination of reverence and defiance. He had the bearing of a warrior recounting victories over a formidable foe. We watched the world, Jax. Learned its rhythms, its dangers, its secrets, and instead of just fighting it, we used what it gave us. Turned the poison into medicine, the predator into... Tom hesitated, searching for the right word, then shrugged. Into a challenge. A test. That, my friend, he gestured grandly around the room, is the human way. We don't just survive, we turn struggle into opportunity. His smile was wide now, disarming and full of pride. It makes us stronger. Jax felt a strange sensation, a mix of admiration, envy and a nagging sense of inadequacy. The Zarthians, with their focus on safety and caution, had they missed something essential? Was there a hidden strength in facing adversity head-on, in daring to dance with the storm instead of cowering from it? You seem... Proud, Jax finally commented, an edge of disbelief in his voice, of this harshness. Tom's face softened. More than proud, grateful. It forced us to be better, smarter, stronger, not just as individuals, but together. He paused as if considering his words. The way I see it, Jax, Earth's not trying to kill us. She's trying to teach us. The words echoed in Jax's mind, unsettling the foundations of his carefully ordered Zarthian worldview. Could it be that the very obstacles they spent centuries avoiding and mitigating were the keys to true resilience? A thousand questions bubbled to the surface. He wanted to know everything. The history of this world, the tools they used, the knowledge they'd amassed in their struggle against the elements. More importantly, he wanted to see it firsthand to experience the chaotic energy of this death world. Can you... Show me? Jax asked hesitantly, almost afraid to voice the request. Tom's smile returned wider than ever. Thought you'd never ask, he said, a touch of mischief in his voice. Now the real tour of Earth begins. He led Jax out of the settlement and into the heart of the storm. This time Jax didn't seek shelter or cower from the onslaught. With Tom as an unexpectedly capable guide, he ventured into the vibrant chaos. They traversed networks of raised platforms, winding through dense jungles, scaled mountains with dizzying drops, cloaked in blinding mist, and navigated marshes teeming with life, both beautiful and deadly. With every step, Jax witnessed the incredible ingenuity and grit of humanity. He saw energy harnessed from raging rivers, crops flourishing in seemingly hostile soil, and medicines derived from the very plants that could kill with a touch. The humans moved with an almost instinctual understanding of their surroundings, anticipating nature's wrath and twisting it to their advantage. More than anything, though, Jax was struck by the indomitable spirit that seemed to pulse through the very air. The humans he encountered, scientists, engineers, farmers, they faced each challenge with a determined glint in their eyes, a hunger to push the limits, to find new solutions to conquer the next impossible. The days blurred into a whirlwind of experiences, each more astonishing than the last. Jax marvelled at underground cities carved into volcanic rock, vast floating structures that rode the turbulent oceans, 
and biodomes that nurture delicate ecosystems in the harshest deserts. He learned to predict the turning of the tides, identify bioluminescent creatures that mark safe passage through a toxic swamp, and even found a grudging respect for a spicy jungle route that was both agonizingly painful and remarkably restorative when properly prepared. Sleep was a rare commodity, replaced by an insatiable hunger for knowledge. He began to suspect that Tom, under the guise of a casual tour guide, was meticulously testing his endurance, adaptability and thirst for understanding. And to his surprise, Jax found that he rather enjoyed it. <laughs> then came the day Tom brought him to a sprawling complex filled with roaring machinery and humming screens. It vibrated with purposeful energy, bristling with a controlled chaos that was oddly familiar. This, Tom announced with barely concealed pride, is where the magic truly happens. And so began the lessons in history. Jax pored over texts, simulations and ancient records detailing humanity's relentless pursuit of innovation. He learned of devastating wars, plagues, natural disasters that pushed civilizations to the brink. Yet with each cataclysm came a surge of progress, a defiant refusal to submit to the whims of fate. The Zarthian in him noted the patterns, the cyclical nature of hardship and advancement. He finally understood that Earth was not an anomaly, but a crucible forging humanity into something exceptional. The death world classification wasn't a warning, it was a testament. The realization struck with a force that left him breathless. Were the Zarthians, with their aversion to risk, their obsession with bureaucratic control, unknowingly stunting their own potential? Jax's final week on Earth transformed from a casual expedition into a fevered quest for answers. He engaged in philosophical debates with scholars, sparred with genetically enhanced warriors, and pored over historical blueprints alongside seasoned engineers. The more he learned, the more he saw the brilliance reflected in Earth's chaotic beauty, the raw power of its storms, the cunning hidden in its predators, the resilience woven into its very soil. The day of his departure arrived far too quickly. He found Tom standing by the landing ramp of his freshly cleaned scout cruiser, the same amused glint in his eyes. So, Tom said, extending a hand, back to those boring reports and safe planets, are you? Jax hesitated, his grip tightening on Tom's calloused hand. An image of his sterile apartment on an orbiting space station flashed through his mind, a haven of predictability that suddenly seemed stifling. He took a deep breath. Not yet, he said, a resolute note in his voice. The exchange can wait. I've got some... recommendations to submit. Tom's eyebrows shot up in surprise, quickly replaced by a broad grin. Recommendations, eh? Now, that sounds intriguing. But first, there's something you need to know. He nodded towards the vast expanse of Earth behind him. Everything you've seen here, Jax. It's only the beginning. We're not done learning, not even close. Jax felt a surge of excitement tempered with a healthy dose of Zarthian practicality. And how exactly do you propose I participate in this continued learning? Well, Tom shrugged, and Jax could have sworn there was a hint of a challenge in his voice. That depends. You up for a little more adventure? And the decision, which would have seemed preposterous mere weeks ago, came easily. Absolutely, Jax said, a spark of anticipation igniting in his chest. A slow smile spread across Tom's face. Good lad. He clapped Jax on the shoulder, the touch surprisingly warm across the scales of his spacesuit. Now, the first step is a proper welcome. You haven't seen anything until you've weathered an earthly celebration. Intrigued, Jax followed Tom back into the heart of the human settlement. The controlled efficiency he had witnessed before gave way to a vibrant explosion of colour, music and tantalising scents. Humans, freed from the constraints of their harsh environment, laughed and danced with an infectious abandon that made Jax's rigid Zarthian protocols seem absurdly restrictive. They feasted on an impossible array of flavours, Jax tentatively sampling the delicacies under Tom's patient guidance, finding new depths to the word spice. He exchanged stories with seasoned explorers, their eyes alight with tales of vast deserts and uncharted oceans. He was even coaxed into an impromptu dance, his awkward movements prompting roars of friendly laughter. As the celebration wound down and the first rays of dawn painted the sky, Jax felt something profound shift within him. It was more than mere scientific curiosity or detached admiration. It was a connection, a sense of belonging in this unpredictable, exhilarating and beautiful world. Jax, 
Tom's voice was quieter now, a hint of understanding in his eyes. Whatever you propose to the exchange, remember this. Earth isn't just a planet. She's a teacher, a partner. And humans, we haven't just survived her, we've become part of her wild dance. Jack surveyed the faces around him, softened by exhaustion and shared experience, and realised in that moment that he had found far more than a corrected classification report. He had found a new perspective, a tantalising glimpse of what the Zarthian species might achieve if they could only let go of a little bit of their control and embrace a little bit of chaos. Thank you, Tom, he said sincerely, for everything. Any time, my friend. Now get back to your ship. The galactic bureaucracy won't reform itself. Tom winked, and Jax felt a strange sensation. Was that hope? Climbing the ramp of his scout ship, Jax cast one last look at Earth. His new home, away from home. He had arrived with a label, a prejudice. He left with a mission. To change not a classification, but an entire galactic mindset. This was only the beginning. Jax's return to Zarthian space was met with a mixture of confusion and barely concealed annoyance. His unauthorised extended stay and cryptic messages about revised assessments had set the rumour mills ablaze, yet when the moment came to present his findings he was granted a full council hearing, a testament to both his seniority and the sheer audacity of his claims. He paced the hallowed halls of the Central Exchange, images of Earth flashing through his mind, raging storms, lush biodomes, the knowing smile on Tom's face. It was a far cry from the polished floors and sterile air that surrounded him. Order! The chief administrator's voice boomed through the council chamber, jolting Jax from his reverie. Scout Captain Jax, you are hereby summoned to present your findings on the planet Earth. Proceed. Taking a deep breath, Jax began. He spoke with newfound eloquence and passion, abandoning the dry language of galactic reports. He described the resilience woven into the planet's ecosystem, the ingenuity born from necessity, and the unwavering spirit embedded in every human he encountered. He addressed the concerns of safety, not with dismissive platitudes, but with hard-won knowledge. He explained the predictive systems, the adaptive technologies, the profound understanding of natural forces that allowed humans to not just survive, but thrive amidst adversity. The Zarthian counsellors stirred uneasily. Concepts of calculated risk and deliberate exposure to hardship were alien, even threatening, to their world view. Yet, Jax pressed on, driven by newfound conviction. Earth, he proclaimed, is not a mistake, it's an opportunity to study not only human resilience, but to re-examine our own stagnant evolution. A wave of protest rose from the assembled delegates, it was the expected reaction, the wall of ingrained prejudice. Jax stood taller, determined to break through. We Zarthians, he declared, pride ourselves on caution and meticulous planning. That has its place, but perhaps it also blinds us. Earth shows us the evolutionary potential of struggle, the innovation born in the gaps between safety and danger. Are we so afraid of risk that we're willing to forfeit our own progress? Silence filled the chamber, a heavy contemplative silence. Jax knew it was a pivotal moment. One word out of place, one hint of disrespect for the established order, and his credibility would crumble. He waited, holding the weight of countless expectant stares. He didn't know if it would change anything, but he'd said his piece. The rest was now in the hands of his people. Days bled into weeks. Jax, back to his bureaucratic duties, began to doubt he'd made any impact at all. The council's silence was deafening. Had he been foolish, too idealistic... Perhaps Earth was too radical a concept for the Zarthian way of life. Maybe comfort and cautiousness were all they could ever manage, and he was a lone voice in a sea of complacent contentment. Then the summons arrived. It was a curt message, devoid of either commendation or reprimand. Captain Jax, present yourself to the Chief Administrator's office without delay. His heart pounded with a curious mix of dread and anticipation. The Chief Administrator, a notoriously stoic Zarthian of the old order, sat behind his imposing desk. Jax braced himself for a dismissal, or worse, a scathing reprimand for undermining centuries of established protocols. Jax! The administrator's voice was surprisingly measured. Your unconventional assessment of Earth has caused quite a stir. He paused, his eyes searching Jax's face. The council sees potential in your ideas, with modifications, of course. 
The flood of relief nearly sent Jack stumbling back. Modifications, he managed to ask. Yes. The administrator shifted in his seat, a flicker of something like begrudging admiration in his eyes. Earth will retain its Death World classification. However, under strictly controlled conditions, we will implement a program of supervised exposure for a select group of volunteers. He paused. You, Jax, will head this initiative. Jack stared. Did he hear correctly? So this is unexpected. Indeed, the administrator confirmed with a wry smile. It is an admittedly bold step for the Zarthians. Yet the Council cannot ignore the stagnation that plagues our colonies, the dwindling spirit of exploration. Your word, uh, they carried weight. Perhaps, just perhaps, we need a dose of your earthly chaos to revitalise us. Jax felt a surge of triumph, not for himself, but for the lessons Earth had imparted. The Zarthians were reluctant, cautious, but the seed had been planted. It will be a challenge, he admitted, a grin spreading across his face, but I think I know just the place to start. The first batch of Zarthian volunteers arrived on Earth with a mixture of trepidation and thinly veiled disdain. They clung to their protective enviro suits, recoiled at the unpredictable weather and grumbled about the lack of proper accommodations. Jax watched with a mix of amusement and a profound sense of responsibility. He had a feeling this was going to be harder than convincing his own hidebound council. Welcome to Earth, he announced, his voice tinged with the same wry humour Tom had used on him weeks before. Your luxury suites await. He gestured towards a clearing in the dense rainforest where a collection of simple, sturdy structures assembled from local materials stood ready. The horrified gasps were almost comical. You call this shelter? One of the Zarthians, a seasoned biologist named Sarix, sputtered indignantly. Where are the atmospheric stabilizers? The sanitation protocols? This is primitive. Exactly, Jack said, meeting the glare head on. But first things first. Shed those suits. They're not going to help you here. He was met with outrage. Decades of safety protocols couldn't be tossed aside so easily. Yet, after a tense standoff, begrudgingly, the Enviro suits came off. The Zarthians squirmed, their exposed scales prickling under the onslaught of unfamiliar humidity and the cacophony of the rainforest. Now, Jax continued, a spark of challenge in his eye, today's lesson, how to survive the night and I suggest you listen carefully. Your fancy protocols won't save you here. Step by step, Jax guided them through the basics. He showed them the delicate dance of identifying edible and poisonous plants, the telltale signs of safe shelter, and the art of building a fire with damp wood. The Zarthians, accustomed to sterile labs and climate-controlled habitats, struggled, fumbled, and cursed his name. Yet, as night fell and the jungle came alive with its eerie symphony of strange sounds, a flicker of something resembling awe crossed their faces. They sat by the crackling fire, exhaustion mixed with the undeniable thrill of facing the unknown and surviving. The weeks that followed were a whirlwind of calculated risks and hard-won lessons. Under Jax's expert guidance and Tom's occasional appearance with a mischievous grin, the Zarthians began to shed both their gear and their deep-seated prejudices. They learned to read the language of Earth's volatile skies, to predict the ebb and flow of dangerous tides, and to harness the hidden power of the natural world around them. It wasn't without its setbacks, of course. There were close calls with venomous creatures, panicked retreats from sudden flash floods, and more than a few bruised egos. Yet, beneath the grumbles and complaints, Jack saw a subtle but profound transformation taking shape. Eyes once narrowed with mistrust began to widen with wonder. Bodies accustomed to the sterile comfort of starships moved with newfound fluidity in tune with the unpredictable rhythms of the planet. News of the Earth expedition travelled back to the Zarthian homeworld with surprising speed, prompting heated debates, expressions of outrage, and more than a few hesitant applications to join the next cohort of volunteers. The old order was being challenged, and the very concept of what it meant to be Zarthian was shifting. One humid afternoon, amidst the bustle of a growing jungle settlement, Sarix, the once indignant biologist, approached Jax. He held a delicate, vibrant flower with shimmering petals. Remember the first day? Sarix said, a rueful smile playing on his lips. I accused you of putting us in a death trap. I was wrong. The flower agrees, Jax replied. It thrives in that supposedly toxic soil. Sarix traced the intricate pattern on the petals. We scanned this plant a hundred times. Our reports showed it should be deadly. 
But here, he gestured at the thriving blossoms surrounding them. It's magnificent. Earth forces you to look beyond data, Jax offered, to observe, to interact, to understand on a different level. A messy level? Sarix chuckled, then turned serious. My team has adapted our scanning tech. We're finding properties, complexities, completely missed by the standard ship scanners. He met Jax's gaze, the eyes of a seasoned scientist filled with newfound purpose. This changes everything, Jax, not just for explorers, but for medicine, for engineering. The potential. It's staggering. That, right there, was Jax's victory. It wasn't just about survival skills or even scientific discoveries. The Earth program was slowly rewiring the Zarthian mindset, turning caution into curiosity, routine into relentless adaptation. As the next generation of wide-eyed Zarthians arrived, eager to test their limits, Jax couldn't help but smile. Earth, once feared and mislabeled, was now a catalyst, forcing his people to embrace the chaotic, the challenging, and to discover the unimaginable rewards hidden within the crucible of a death world. The Earth programs thrived, pushing boundaries and blurring the lines between Zarthian and human. Joint research teams delved into the complexities of the death world ecosystem, unearthing biological secrets that revolutionised Zarthian medicine and engineering. Teams of human engineers and Zarthian theorists collaborated on groundbreaking new adaptive technologies designed not for conquering hostile environments, but for thriving within them. Years later, Jax found himself back on the familiar landing pad overlooking the sprawling human settlement. He was no longer a mere scout, but a seasoned advisor, his once outlandish ideas now core principles in Zarthian exploration doctrine. Tom greeted him with a bone-crushing hug and a familiar grin. "'Welcome back, old friend,' he boomed. "'Come to check up on our little experiment?' "'Experiment?' Jax chuckled. "'I think it's safe to call it a resounding success.' Together, they walked through the thriving settlement, a testament to the extraordinary partnership forged between their species. Zarthian biodomes bloomed within the jungle— their energy systems seamlessly integrated with Earth's geothermal vents, human-designed bridges built to flex with the unpredictable tides connected remote islands. The very architecture spoke of collaboration, of finding strength in the meeting of two vastly different worlds. In the heart of the settlement, a new academy was taking shape unlike anything Jax had ever seen. Zarthian scholars pored over archaic earth texts filled with the philosophy of resilience. Young humans practiced meditation techniques designed to enhance focus within chaos. It was a place where both species learned from each other, the rigid Zarthian mindset giving way to flexibility and the humans gaining insight from Zarthian meticulousness and planning. We're calling it the Forge, Tom explained, a note of pride in his voice, a place to mould the next generation of explorers, not just survivors, Jax, but those who embrace the unexpected and turn it into an opportunity. Watching the lively interaction between the human and Zarthian students, Jax felt a deep sense of satisfaction. It was more than just a new academy. It was a symbol of a galaxy transformed. The fear of difference had given way to a hunger for collaboration. Earth, the supposed death world, had not destroyed the Zarthians, but instead catalyzed their evolution into something stronger bolder and infinitely more resilient. As the fiery earth sun dipped below the horizon, painting the sky with vibrant hues, Jax turned to Tom and said, You know, the first time I came here I saw only danger. Now all I see is potential. That's what earth does to you, my friend, Tom replied, his eyes twinkling with an uncanny wisdom. She shows you possibilities hidden in plain sight. And as Jax gazed out across the ever-changing, ever-challenging and ever-beautiful earth, he realised that the true potential was not just in the planet, but in the limitless possibilities born from the willingness to dance with chaos, to learn from adversity and to forge something extraordinary in the crucible of constant challenge. The galaxy, once a vast and unknown frontier, now seemed less of a place to conquer and more a place to learn, to adapt and to thrive. The forge hummed with a purposeful energy that seemed to resonate with Earth itself. Students, both human and Zarthian, moved in a harmonious flow, their voices a mix of languages and accents as they debated survival techniques, analysed alien biospheres and calibrated delicate instruments under the watchful eyes of seasoned mentors. A sudden hush fell over the usually boisterous training centre. 
Every eye turned towards the main communication console where a transmission was being projected, not the usual scientific reports, but an emergency briefing from the Galactic Council. Jax and Tom shared a worried glance as they stepped into the hushed crowd. The image flickered onto the main screen, revealing an unfamiliar species, bipedal, chitinous exoskeletons, and a disconcerting array of articulated limbs. Urgent, the creature's voice rasped, translated through the universal comm system. This is Inquisitor Xerax of the Vitroth Empire. We offer observation and a cautionary tale. The Vitroth? No one had interacted with that reclusive species in centuries. What could they possibly want? On the screen, Xerax gestured with a clawed limb towards a star chart. Systems blinked into existence, then turned a sickly red one by one. A new threat is encroaching on our quadrant of the galaxy. Unknown aggressors. They sweep across worlds, leaving nothing but barren waste in their wake. Technology offers no defence. They adapt at an alarming rate. He pauses, mandibles clicking in an unsettling rhythm. Their trajectory suggests your region of space is next. Whispers of unease rippled through the forge. Jax noticed with a sinking feeling the tension in his own scales, mirroring that of the trainees around him. Even with their earth-forged resilience, the Zarthians were still Zarthians. And now a primal fear of an unknown and unstoppable foe threatened to unravel the progress they'd made. Why contact us? It was a young Zarthian biologist, her voice sharp with barely restrained panic. Are you... asking for help? Help? The Inquisitor let out a dry rasp that might have been laughter. We offer a warning. Prepare as your limited species sees fit. The transmission cut abruptly, leaving an oppressive silence in its wake. Jax felt his newly honed instincts screaming. Could Earth and its philosophy of adaptation even stand a chance against an enemy capable of decimating entire civilizations? Or had the galaxy finally presented them with a challenge they couldn't overcome? Tom broke the tense silence, his voice a steady rumble against the rising tide of anxiety. All right, folks. Enough staring at blank screens? We have a situation to analyse. His words sparked a flurry of activity. Humans and Zarthians alike clustered around communication hubs, pulling up every scrap of intel on the Vitroth and the mysterious aggressors. Jax found himself drawn back to the Forge's central courtyard, now transformed into an impromptu strategy room. Ah, we have to assume they're right, Jax said, his voice low, but we need more data. How far out is this threat? What kind of technology are we dealing with? An older human scientist with a shock of white hair stepped forward. That's the problem. We don't know. The Vitroth have kept themselves isolated from galactic affairs for centuries. They have tech far beyond our own, better sensors. If they're reaching out, the situation's critical. Jax felt a surge of unease. Dealing with the unknown had become a strength for his people, but this was different an enemy capable of unravelling even the advanced tech of the reclusive Vitroth. Earth's philosophy of adaptation seemed woefully inadequate in the face of such a threat. Their warning changes things, Tom mused, his brow furrowed in concentration. The Vitroth don't do altruism. They're contacting us because they think we might have a chance, or because they want us as cannon fodder to buy them time. Either way, Jax replied grimly, we're stuck in the middle of this. We need the Council's support to have any hope. The forge buzzed with a desperate energy for days on end. Zarthian analysts dissected the limited data on the approaching enemy, while human engineers retrofitted existing Earth-based defence systems with their combined Zarthian Earth innovations. Sleep was a luxury few could afford as they pushed themselves to the limit. Yet beneath the frenetic activity, Jack sensed a creeping, familiar feeling, the old Zarthian fatalism. It's not enough, Sarix, the once indignant biologist, admitted. We're used to adapting to dangers we can observe, analyse. This is blind guesswork. Jax had to agree. Their usual earth-honed strategies felt inadequate. For the first time in years, he found himself longing for the safety of sterile corridors and rigid protocols. Then a spark ignited in Tom's eyes, a familiar mischievous glint. Jax, he said slowly, remember when you first arrived on Earth, all smug and prepared, thinking we were all a bunch of reckless fools? Jax winced at the reminder. How could I forget? Well, maybe you Zarthians haven't fully absorbed the death world mindset yet. He paused, a daring light in his gaze. What if, instead of simply defending ourselves, 
We fight the way Earth does. Would you like to explore this? Perhaps Earth's way isn't just adaptation and resilience, but something bolder, more unpredictable. Fight like Earth does, Jax echoed. The concept is alien as it was intriguing. Earth teaches defence, adaptation, not aggression. And that's assuming this enemy can even be fought. Tom grinned. Exactly. Think about it. Earth doesn't just wait for the storm, it changes the weather patterns. Doesn't just endure the predator, it becomes the thing predators fear. His words struck a chord in Jack's. Earth didn't just bend to its challenges. It defied them in unexpected, utterly ingenious ways. It used poison as medicine, weakness as camouflage, turned the hunter into the hunted. They hadn't just learned to live on a death world, they had weaponized it. He felt a thrill of something akin to defiance. It's insane, he admitted, but the word didn't feel negative. How do we even begin to... We start with what they didn't show us, Tom interrupted, his eyes sparkling with a dangerous energy. They didn't give concrete details on the enemy because they don't want to reveal their own tech vulnerabilities. They want us to panic and react predictably. So we do the opposite. Jax felt the old Zarthian rigidity within him begin to crumble. We improvise, we hit them with things they can't anticipate, because we're barely anticipating it ourselves. Tom paced excitedly. Earth tech designed for chaos pushed to the extreme. Zarthian analytical minds finding the breaking points. And that's just the beginning. Jax's mind raced. Bioengineered pathogens from Earth's most toxic swamps adapted to target unknown alien biology. Weather control systems repurposed to unleash destabilizing electromagnetic storms. Even the adaptive camouflage tech used for navigating Earth's treacherous terrain could be tuned into an offensive weapon. It won't be enough, Jax countered his newfound enthusiasm, battling the ingrained Zarthian pessimism. It doesn't have to be, Tom said, and his smile was that of a predator. We're not looking to win. We're looking to make them bleed, make them wonder what the hell just hit them. We turn ourselves into the unpredictable nightmare their advanced sensors can't compute. We make them afraid to take another step into our territory. The forge shifted again, its energy now focused and deadly. Humans and Zarthians worked side by side, pushing the boundaries of science, strategy, and the very concept of fighting back. And perhaps more importantly, the fear was receding, replaced by the relentless audacity that was Earth's hallmark. Jax knew then that this wasn't just about survival anymore, it was about defiance. A testament to the true potential of the earth Zarthian alliance, a testament to the galaxy-shaking philosophy born on a little, mislabeled death world at the edge of the known universe. Word of Earth's audacious plan spread throughout the galaxy like wildfire. The galactic council chambers, usually filled with cautious debate and bureaucratic manoeuvring, buzzed with a desperate, almost reckless energy. Calls for surrender were met with derisive, earth-inspired scoffs and counter-proposals that would have seemed like suicidal madness mere months before. The Vitroth, initially dismissive, sent another communication, this time one filled with a mixture of grudging admiration and thinly-veiled apprehension. They offered limited, heavily censored intel on the enemy, a species known as the Ravagers, relentless in their expansion and eerily devoid of any discernible motives beyond consumption. They move like an infestation, Inquisitor Xerax rasped, his voice laden with an alien weariness. No diplomacy, no strategy we can analyse. They consume resources, adapt to defences, and multiply uncontrollably. Yet in the Vitroth's data, the Forge's strategist found the glimmer of an advantage. While the Ravagers adapted at a terrifying pace, their focus was on overriding existing technology. They didn't create, they repurposed, a subtle but exploitable weakness. They're scavengers, Tom stated, his eyes gleaming as he presented his findings to the Council. They're used to picking apart the defences of conquered civilizations. They've never faced a world that fights back in ways they can't hijack. And so the hive mind strategy was born. Earth became a labyrinth of deceptive targets. Dummy bases filled with tempting tech, laced with bioweapons and self-destruct systems. Swarms of drones deployed, each carrying a fragment of Earth's most volatile viral strains, programmed to scatter unpredictably like a deadly pollen. The weather itself became a weapon, with artificial storms masking the build-up of true forces within the most unassuming of Earth's natural fortifications. We make ourselves the poison apple, 
Jax declared, the once cautious scout now barely recognisable in his ferocious determination. We make them think we're easy prey. Then we turn their own greed against them. At when the first tendrils of the Ravager fleet pierced their section of space, they weren't met with the expected cowering defence. Instead, they were lured in, deeper and deeper, into a maddening puzzle box of a planet, each victory revealing a new layer of deadly countermeasures. The galaxy watched with a mix of horror and awe as the relentless Ravager advance sputtered and stalled against the unpredictable chaos of Earth. No, Jax thought with grim satisfaction, the Zarthian Earth partnership hadn't won, but they had bought the galaxy something far more valuable, time. Time to observe, analyse the Ravager weaknesses to adapt, and to forge their own death world strategies. Earth, once a symbol of supposed inferiority, was now a beacon of defiance. The war raged on. It wasn't the glorious clash of civilizations some had envisioned, but a gruelling battle of attrition against an enemy that seemed as innumerable as it was relentless. Each hard-won victory against the Ravagers was paid for in blood, in resources pushed to their limits, and in the constant gnawing uncertainty of what the enemy might adapt to next. Yet the galaxy was changing. The old order, built on safety and rigid hierarchies, crumbled. In its place rose a desperate pragmatism tempered with the iron will forged in the fires of Earth's defiance. Species once content to languish in their safe enclaves found themselves dragged into the conflict, forced to either adapt or perish. Jax found himself not just a commander, but a teacher. Teams of Zarthian strategists accompanied other races, sharing the Earth-inspired philosophy of unpredictable defence, of calculated chaos. He witnessed a stoic turtle-like species reimagine the concept of planetary defence, seeding decoy worlds with toxic flora, creating mobile fortresses disguised as harmless asteroids. A nomadic avian race, used to constant migration, turned retreat into a weapon, luring Ravager fleets into ambushes within treacherous nebulae. There were setbacks, terrible losses, moments when the Ravagers seemed on the verge of overwhelming them all. But Earth held. Each wave broken against the planet's shores taught the galaxy new lessons in fighting the unwinnable, in turning limitations into deadly surprises. Jax felt himself ageing at an accelerated pace. His scales were flecked with grey, his honed reflexes a touch slower, yet his spirit burned brighter than ever. One evening, watching a new generation of Forge graduates depart for their assignments across the embattled galaxy, he caught Tom's reflection in the window pane. You look tired, old friend, Tom remarked, the laugh lines around his eyes deeper, forged in the crucible of constant war. Tired but satisfied, Jax replied, turning to face him. Look what we started, Tom. The galaxy is awakening, finding a strength it never knew it had. He paused, the images of countless battles flashing through his mind. I just hope it's enough. Tom placed a weathered hand on Jax's shoulder. It's never about being enough, Jax. It's about refusing to stop. It's about having the guts to keep dancing, even when the storm is tearing the world apart, because maybe, just maybe, you can change the damn weather. He winked, and for a moment Jax glimpsed the brash young man who had first challenged him on that storm-drenched day so long ago. Jax met his gaze, exhaustion replaced by a defiant determination. The earth Zarthian alliance had changed him, changed the galaxy itself, and the fight the endless fight for survival against an insatiable foe had given him a profound appreciation for the simple joy of another sunrise, of another chance to outsmart, outmaneuver and outlast the forces aligned against them. Perhaps that, he thought, was Earth's greatest lesson of all. The war stretched on like an endless brutal symphony. The Ravagers, despite initial setbacks, continued to adapt, their relentless hunger pushing them onwards. In a desperate gamble, the forge turned its focus onto the very heart of the enemy, not just their weapons or tactics, but their fundamental biology. It was maddening work. Ravager specimens were rare, their bodies seeming to disintegrate upon defeat, leaving little to analyse. Yet fragments of tissue whispered of bizarre hybrid origins, of a species built more on rapid assimilation than natural evolution. This, Jax realised, was their key weakness as well as their horrifying strength. Uh, they're a patchwork he explained to the assembled council, a mixture of weary generals and wide-eyed forge graduates. Built on stolen genetic code, this constant splicing, it makes them unstable. Somewhere within them there's a breaking point. An eerie silence descended, 
It was a desperate hope, a flimsy thread to cling to in the face of overwhelming odds. So we exploit it, Tom's voice cut through the tension. His once vibrant features bore the scars of countless battles, yet his eyes held their familiar indomitable spark. We overload their system, hit them with so many contradictory adaptations at once, their own bodies turn against them. It was a long shot, a plan steeped in both desperation and the relentless earth-driven need to find opportunity in catastrophe. Teams across the galaxy began their painstaking work. Zarthian bioanalysts dissected ancient earth plagues, isolating the most unstable viral strains. Human geneticists, aided by the reluctant expertise of the Vitroth, mapped out the chaotic Ravager genome, identifying the key pressure points. Word reached Jacks of an audacious plan by their allies a faint attack with a fleet partially infected with a volatile cocktail of bioweapons, each strain triggering wildly divergent mutations. It was the ultimate gamble, sacrifice a portion of their forces to hopefully trigger a devastating chain reaction within the very heart of the Ravager Horde. When the moment came, Jax watched the transmission feed from the heart of the forge, surrounded by a sea of grim, determined faces. The battle raged across the scarred landscape of an unnamed planet. Then came the critical juncture. The infected ships plunged into the heart of the Ravager formation, detonating not in blinding explosions, but in a hideous shower of mutating flesh. Silence. Then, chaos. The Ravager battle line rippled not with tactical retreat, but with something far more horrifying. An uncontrollable eruption of tumorous growths, grotesque transformations, the very cohesion of their fleet dissolving into a monstrous, self-destructive wave. It wasn't a clean victory, it was brutal, horrific, and terrifyingly effective. For the first time in years, Jax felt the grim tide of the war shift. The Ravagers, caught off guard by the unpredictable bio-assault, were slow to adapt. Panic ripped through their previously unstoppable advance. As the galaxy rallied, pushing their hard-won advantage, Jax allowed himself a flicker of hope. Perhaps, just perhaps, they might hold the line. Maybe survival wasn't an unattainable dream after all. Survival, however, came at a terrible cost. Whole worlds were ravaged, countless lives lost. The galaxy itself bore the scars of the relentless war, and there was no end in sight. Even as they exploited the Ravagers' vulnerability, adapting their bioweapons faster than the enemy could counter them, it felt like a constant, desperate retreat punctuated by Pyrrhic victories. It was on one such devastated moon, in a makeshift command centre overlooking a field of fallen comrades, that the shift happened. News had reached Jax of a daring raid. A small team led by Tom had infiltrated a Ravager breeding ground. The goal wasn't destruction, but information. A final desperate gamble to understand the true origins of the enemy they battled. The transmission flickered to life. Tom's face was gaunt, eyes bloodshot with weariness and something Jax couldn't quite decipher. Jax, he began, his voice hoarse, they don't breed in the way we understand it. It's more like forced assimilation. They consume populations, entire biospheres, strip them down to the genetic level, then splice the fragments into their own monstrous evolution. There was a haunted pause. We found the remains, traces of thousands of species, species we never even knew existed, gone, and... Tom swallowed. And Earth, Jax. There are fragments of Earth's biocode woven into their very genome. Jax felt a surge of horror, unlike anything he'd experienced throughout this endless war. The Ravagers weren't just a threat. They were a perversion of nature, and somewhere, deep within their stolen genetic makeup, they carried a twisted echo of his adopted home. A cold fury ignited within him. No longer was this a fight for survival. It was a struggle for the soul of the galaxy itself, a crusade to avenge the countless worlds and species devoured by this insatiable evil. The Earth philosophy had been about adapting, about outsmarting the enemy. Now, it was about something far more visceral. It was about defiance made manifest, a burning rage against a foe that dared to corrupt the very essence of life. When Jax addressed the council, it wasn't with the voice of a seasoned strategist, but with the guttural snarl of a predator backed into a corner. We find the heart of their operations, he rasped, the source of this abomination, and we burn it to the ground. The plan was as ruthless as it was daring. 
they would use the Ravagers' own unpredictable evolution against them, luring them to a world seeded with a cocktail of unstable genetic code. The bioweapons weren't designed just to kill now, but to corrupt the very heart of the Ravagers' forced assimilation process. It was a desperate gamble that could backfire horrifically. But it was their only chance to strike a crippling blow. In the final battle, Jax held no illusions of glory. This was about survival, both his own and that of the galaxy he fought for. This was about the fallen and about those who might still have a chance. And, blazing at the core of his fury, was the burning need for vengeance for the twisted fragments of Earth stitched into the monstrous form of an enemy that could never be reasoned with, never be stopped, only eradicated. The trap was a testament to the galaxy's desperate evolution, a testament to the lessons learned at the feet of a brutal teacher called Earth. A dead world, seemingly barren, was meticulously crafted into an irresistible lure. Armies burrowed deep beneath the desolate surface, leaving tantalising traces of exploitable energy sources and a labyrinth of decoy targets ripe for assimilation. When the Ravager horde descended, it was not the cautious, probing force they had become accustomed to fighting. It was a ravenous flood, driven by an insatiable hunger amplified by the carefully crafted deception. They swarmed across the planet, their tendrils plunging deep, each assimilation fueling their expansion with reckless abandon. And so the counter-strike began. Not a ground assault, but a devastating orbital bombardment. The unstable genetic cocktail embedded within the world itself began to ripple through the Ravager ranks. Their evolution, once their greatest weapon, devolved into a grotesque parody of itself. Tumorous growths erupted uncontrollably, limbs twisted and reformed with monstrous, unusable appendages. Their very cohesion as a fighting force dissolved into a writhing mass of self-destructive horror. Jax fought alongside a menagerie of allies, each species bearing the scars of the Ravager War. There were towering, crystalline beings forged in the heart of a dying star, their weapons searing beams of pure energy. Avian warriors swooped amidst the chaos, their haunting battle cries echoing the calls of long-extinct Earth raptors. And at the forefront, humans, wielding the relentless ingenuity born of their homeworld, their faces etched with unyielding determination. It was a brutal, merciless end. The Ravagers, twisted and broken by their own insatiable hunger, turned on themselves, their dying screams lost in the symphony of destructive energy. Yet there was no triumph in this victory, only a grim satisfaction laced with the bitter tang of loss. As the dust settled on the ravaged battlefield, Jax found Tom, his friend bloodied but unbowed. The earthling's eyes, once alight with audacious humour, now held the hollowed gaze of a warrior who had stared into the abyss. It's done, Jack said, the words heavy in the desolate silence. But what did it make us? Tom's voice was barely a whisper. We fought monsters and became something monstrous in the process. Jax watched as the clean-up crews, a mix of weary survivors from a dozen races, began the grim task of eradicating any trace of the Ravagers. There could be no risk, no twisted fragment of genetic code, left to start the cycle of corruption anew, he had become the thing he despised, advocating for a ruthlessness he never thought himself capable of. We did what we had to, he replied, but the words felt hollow. They surveyed the scarred battlefield, the countless dead. Earth had taught him defiance, adaptability. The Ravagers had taught a terrible final lesson. Sometimes survival was its own kind of relentless brutality, and as a lone star flared on the horizon, Jax couldn't shake the chilling thought that perhaps the galaxy hadn't truly won. Perhaps in defeating the ultimate evil, they had inadvertently poisoned their own souls in the process. The galaxy bore the scars of its victory, a grim testament to the cost of survival. Worlds once vibrant were now barren wastelands, entire species pushed to the brink of extinction, teetered on the verge of collapse. The lines between heroes and survivors blurred, the desperate measures that had saved them now a source of chilling uncertainty about the future they had fought so hard to secure. Jax, hailed as a saviour and strategist, felt the weight of his newfound status like a suffocating shroud. He moved through the desolate halls of the Galactic Council, his every word scrutinised by hollow-eyed delegates, haunted by the choices they had made. The forge, once a symbol of hope, echoed with an unnerving silence, its graduates, their youthful idealism tempered in the crucible of war, struggled to envision a future where their talents would not be used for devising ever more devastating weapons. In the quiet of his quarters, 
haunted by nightmares of writhing ravager masses and the dead gaze of fallen friends, Jax found himself reaching for an ancient data drive. It contained the initial recordings of his first fateful mission to Earth, the raw, unfiltered reactions of a Zarthian terrified by the planet's chaotic nature. He played the recordings, the sounds of his own panicked warnings echoing in the sterile room. It was a confrontation with a past self he barely recognised, a reminder of the Zarthian he had been, cautious, obsessed with control, terrified of the unpredictable. And then came Tom's voice, booming through the speakers full of laughter and bold challenges. A little downpour, wouldn't you say? Jax closed his eyes, the memory of that rain-drenched day washing over him, the lush, dangerous vibrancy of Earth, Tom's unwavering confidence, the stirrings of something new and defiant awakening within himself. He had come to Earth seeking a classification change, a bureaucratic adjustment. Instead, he had found a revolution ignited within his own spirit, a revolution that had spread like wildfire throughout the galaxy. Yet now, gazing at the cold, lifeless expanse beyond his window, he wondered if they had truly won, or if they had merely bartered their souls for a temporary reprieve from annihilation. Earth had taught them strength born from struggle, but had they lost sight of something equally vital along the way? The galaxy needed more than warriors now, more than survivalists. It desperately needed healers, builders, those who could envision a future not defined solely by the scars of the past. Leaving the damning echoes of his old recordings behind, Jack strode towards the forge. He would find the wide-eyed graduates, the ones questioning the path laid before them. It was time to share the most important lesson Earth had ever taught him, a lesson nearly forgotten amid the desperate fight for survival. It was not enough to simply defy the darkness. One had to also reignite the stars. Jack sought out Tom finding him not within the bustling halls of the forger but in a small, overgrown garden tucked away amidst the human settlement on Earth. The once meticulously ordered, Zarthian would have dismissed such a place as an inefficient use of space. Now, he understood the chaotic beauty mirrored something essential that the war had nearly eroded from them. Tom sat hunched on a moss-covered bench, a far cry from the brash figure of their first encounter. He looked up as Jax approached, a flicker of surprise and perhaps weariness crossing his face. "'Came to gloat, did you?' Tom asked, a bitter edge to his humour. "'Tell me how right those stuffy councillors were, putting a warrior like you in charge of rebuilding.' Jax settled beside him, the silence stretching between them comfortably, a stark contrast to the urgency that had defined their interactions for years. I came to ask for your help, old friend, he said finally. Tom let out a harsh laugh. Me? Help build a future? I'm good at breaking things, Jax, not fixing them. That's where you're wrong, Jax countered. Earth taught us to defy. It showed us how to fight back. But we've forgotten the other half of its lesson, how to endure, how to nurture, how to create from the ashes of destruction. He gestured towards the vibrant tangle of vegetation surrounding them, a riot of life thriving in unexpected corners. This place, it shouldn't work rationally, it's messy, unpredictable, and yet it flourishes. They sat in silence, watching as a hummingbird, its wings a blur of iridescent motion darted between vibrant blooms. We won the war, Tom, Jack spoke softly, the words heavy with the complexity he couldn't fully articulate. But at what cost? We've taught a generation to fight, to outsmart, but what do we teach them to fight for? What do we envision to replace what was lost? Tom turned towards him, the weight of countless battles etched into his features. Hope, he rasped, the word barely audible. Hope's a damned dangerous thing, Jax. Get it wrong, and it breaks what's left of your spirit. Or it kindles a fire, Jax countered, and a flicker of the old, stubborn determination sparked in his eyes. We build a new forge, Tom, not for weapons but for solutions. We bring together scientists, engineers, philosophers... He hesitated, a wry smile playing on his lips. Maybe even a touch of the old Zarthian caution, tempered with that earth-honed audacity. And we build what? Tom challenged. A better future, Jack said, the conviction growing in his voice. We heal worlds, Tom. We find solutions not just for war, but for peace. A harder, less glamorous peace. We relearn what we lost sight of, chasing survival. A spark flickered in Tom's eyes, a cautious echo of the defiant, reckless man Jax had first met. And if it fails? If all this careful rebuilding crumbles again? 
Jax met his gaze unflinchingly. Then we do what Earth does, my friend. We adapt, we rebuild, we endure. He held out a hand, a gesture that would have been unthinkable years ago. We start with planting a seed, Tom. The rest? Well, we figure that out as we go along, just like you humans always do. The new forge was an anomaly, a defiant beacon of hope amid the scarred and weary galaxy. It was a place not of gleaming metal and sterile labs, but of sprawling gardens, repurposed battlefields transformed into testing grounds for bioremediation, and workshops filled with the sounds of lively debate rather than weapons manufacture. Jax, despite his title as director, was more often found covered in soil and engaged in a heated discussion about sustainable energy solutions with a feathered alien engineer than seated behind a command console. Tom, ever the reluctant figurehead, somehow managed to instill a sense of wild-eyed wonder in a group of jaded Zarthian biochemists with his infectious, if occasionally reckless, enthusiasm for experimentation. It was messy, chaotic and exhilarating. Fledgling projects sprouted, some withering from lack of resources or unforeseen obstacles, while others took root with astonishing tenacity. There were whispered talks of revolt from hardliners within the council, branding the forge a waste of precious time and funds. Yet they couldn't deny the subtle but undeniable shift happening across the galaxy. Battle-hardened veterans applied their tactical skills to rebuilding efforts, their ruthlessly organised supply chains now distributing vital resources instead of weapons. Healers, accustomed to mending wounds on the battlefield, shared knowledge with overwhelmed outposts, battling mutated plagues in the wake of the war. A team of human philosophers and a colony of sentient crystalline beings debated the ethics of restoring devastated ecosystems, their combined perspectives, unearthing solutions neither species could have conceived alone. News of their endeavours spread like pollen on the solar wind. Delegations from the farthest corners of the galaxy arrived, some seeking solutions to lingering wartime devastation, others drawn by the older city of dreaming and rebuilding instead of simply rearming. Delegations that, years ago, would have never dreamed of setting foot on Earth, now eagerly to read the rainforests and geothermal energy plants, the lessons of a death world transformed into the blueprint for a galaxy-wide revitalization. One day, Jax received a summons that made the old Zarthian in him rear back in trepidation. The Vitroth wished for an audience. He found Inquisitor Zyrax standing before a flourishing hydroponics facility, the bioluminescent plants painting the insectoid alien's kittenous exoskeleton with an eerie beauty. Impressive, Zyrax rasped, tilting his segmented head with unsettling curiosity. You take the lessons of war and breed. Nourishment? Such a waste of potential. Jax, despite his initial unease, held the Vitroth's unnerving gaze. Potential, Inquisitor, comes in many forms, he replied, a hint of a challenge in his voice. This waste feeds a starving colony that once relied on dwindling wartime rations. This is how we ensure that when the next threat comes, and it will come, we face it with strength born from abundance, not desperation. The Inquisitor was silent for a long moment, only the rhythmic clicking of mandibles breaking the tense air. It is uh, unsettling he finally admitted. This forced optimism in the face of inevitable annihilation. It makes no logical sense. The galaxy survived, Inquisitor, Jax countered, not because of cold logic, but because of a reckless, illogical hope that perhaps things could be different. That defiance sparked the fires of Chang, and those flames won't be easily extinguished. He left the Vitroth amidst the glowing plants, the future they would reap uncertain. It was all uncertain the success, the failures, the endless struggle to rebuild, to grow, to find a galaxy fit for the hard-won lessons of war, of survival and of Earth. There was no guarantee it would work, no safety net of cautious planning. But that, Jax realised, walking back into the heart of the forge, was the greatest gift Earth had offered them. The courage to forge ahead anyway, the grit to dance with chaos and the stubborn belief that the galaxy, like the most tenacious of Earth's flora, could bloom again from the ashes of its greatest battle.